That's it? That's probably a strange thought to have after a nine hour movie, but that was literally my first thought after watching the Battle of the Five Armies. A lot of people complain about the ending of The Return of the King for being too long. It's not. But I think when it comes to The Hobbit, Jackson overcompensated by not ending half the plot lines he starts. Don't believe me? Well, let's take a look at the complete lack of resolution. Alfred. Alfred is a character mostly invented by Jackson to distract the audience from how fucking tedious the battle scenes are. While everyone else is busy fighting the battle, Jackson cuts back to Alfred's cowardly exploits four times during the final battle. Given that he gets more screen time than Ori, Dory, Nori, Biffer, Boffer, and Billy Connolly, you might think he serves an important part of the plot. Maybe he fucks something up so bad that it results in another character's death. Or maybe he actually becomes a brave character who learns how to shave his unibrow. But no, the last time we see Alfred, he's escaping the city in a dress. Bard shakes his head in resignation, and the story just rolls on like nothing happened. He kinda has an arc in that he was a dick to women, and now he has to dress as a woman. But so what? He doesn't learn anything. He doesn't change. It doesn't even feel like he's getting his comeuppance, because he's not even embarrassed by his situation. Not every man's brave enough to wear a corset. And in the end, he escapes with a brar full of money. His interactions with Bard don't even advance Bard's story either. And he threw it all away. For oh what? Bard always loved his kids. He doesn't need to be reminded of that. And what exactly does Alfred mean by Master's mantle was there for the taking. And he threw it all away. Bard's been leading the men the entire movie. Just because he refuses to be called the master doesn't mean he's not in charge. Maybe he just wants to avoid the title because of the bad political connotations. That's a smart move. And the scenes themselves are just there to break up the monotonous battle scenes. The character is dropped the moment his usefulness as a distraction dries up, and he is never mentioned again. This is kind of the beginning of a pattern. I say we stand with our men in life and in death. Now maybe they were in the background of a shot or something, but the female presence in the battle never amounts to anything. It's like the scene is just there to ward off critiques of anti-feminism. But such blatant pandering just seems all the more offensive because of that. I mean, did Jackson really think that women were going to like the movie more just because there's a scene where someone says girl power, even though we never see them act on it? And besides, if you wanted to have an actual scene of girl power, why not have one of Bard's two daughters do something during the movie other than screaming in terror? <laughs> You could have one of them help slay Smaug instead of his son. I think that they said that a scene with the women in the battle is going to be in the extended edition, but I don't care about that. I paid to see the movie in the theater. This is another pattern when it comes to The Hobbit. Bayorn. Bayorn technically makes an appearance at the end of battle, so obviously that warrants him having a 20 minute long scene establishing his character in the previous movie, right? Yeah. I mean, he tells us that Azog enslaved him, committed genocide on his people, and tortured him for sport. You'd think that there'd be some kind of payoff to this at the end of the movie. I mean, it wouldn't take much. Just a line of dialogue where he's like, thanks for killing Azog. Now I don't hate dwarves as much. Showing a bear skydive off an eagle doesn't count as resolution. But most importantly, the fucking Arkenstone. Hey, remember how our character spent seven hours of screen time looking for the Arkenstone? You know, they faced all sorts of dangers, swam through a toilet, wrestled a dragon for it. You think after all that, there'd be a scene where they showed what happened to it? Maybe put it back above the throne like it was in the prologue. You know, full circle and stuff. Well, you would be wrong. Just the wrongest. This is the last time we ever see the Arkenstone. King may have it, and our goodwill. What does Bard do with it? Does he give it back to Erebor? Is Jackson expecting us to assume that? Why? The whole story was about all of these greedy people risking the lives of their friends over stupid material shit. Is Bard just going to give it back? Even if Thorin is dead? Maybe he just keeps it as a paperweight for all I know. Or maybe he dropped it while riding that sled into that troll. Who knows? I certainly don't. Now the Arkenstone is just a MacGuffin. It's just something that gets the plot moving. But surely the characters we supposedly care about would want to get the stone back? And while we're on the topic, 
Do the people of Lake Town ever get the gold they need to survive? Does Thranduil end up getting the white gems he risked an army for? These are the central conflicts in the middle of the movie and they are completely unresolved. It'd be like if in The Return of the King there wasn't a scene where the king fucking returns. Movie. The third movie is where it all happens. The third movie is where everything comes together. But if making three movies wasn't enough, I'd argue that Jackson actually went one further and instead made four. Now maybe some of these scenes will show up in the extended edition, but if they do, that's even worse than them just not existing. Extended editions for The Lord of the Rings existed because Jackson had bonus scenes that expanded the mythology of the world, but would make the movie too long for the theaters. With The Hobbit, The Battle of the Five Armies, it's clear to me that Jackson has removed crucial scenes just to bait people into buying the extended editions. Leaving out Thorin's funeral, Dane's inauguration, and other scenes is just completely absurd. These aren't just bonus scenes that are fun for the fans of the books, these are crucial plot developments. He might as well have released the extended edition of the Battle of the Five Armies in two parts in the theaters because the end result is still the same. You still gotta pay twice to get the full story. So instead of resolving the plot, what do we get? Lord of the References. The ending of the Battle of the Five Armies has so many references to the Lord of the Rings that it becomes completely distracting. Number one. The eagles are coming. No, they're not. They're already here. This made sense back in Return of the King because the next shot is of the rest of the eagles coming. The eagles are coming! In Botfa, Bilbo says this after they've already arrived. Why is he speaking so stupid? Oh yeah, references. The Sackville Bagginses. Perfectly well who I am, Lobelia Sackville Baggins. Even though this trilogy spent zero time establishing any other characters in the Shire, it decides to throw one last reference to the original trilogy by having a cutaway shot to someone the audience doesn't even know that completely distracts from the emotional conclusion of the story. Psst. Who is that Sackville person? Shh, I'm trying to watch the movie. My friend. What did he say there? Well, if you weren't talking. Well done, smoke rings. Okay, so Thorin has just died and it's supposed to be a pretty sad moment. But then up walks Gandalf to do the pipe smoking thing from Fellowship. This scene is utterly perplexing to me. My first thought was honestly, why is Gandalf being such an insensitive prick? I mean, dude, he just lost his lover. I, I mean, I mean friend. He was my friend. Actually, doesn't Gandalf come off as kind of a prick in this trilogy? I mean, he just shows up on Bilbo's door, slaps him in the face with a smoke bird, and then vandalizes his house. Later, when the dwarves justifiably disagree with him, he puts the whole room into darkness until they all submit to his will. He doesn't tell Thorin that his mortal enemy is alive, and then, when he can't convince Thorin to agree with him about going to the elves, he stalks off like an immature child and calls everyone stupid. Gandalf, where are you going? I seek the company of the only one around here who's got any sense. But who's that? Myself, Mr. Baggins. He has a telepathic conversation with Galadriel while his boss is talking, which I guess is the Middle Earth version of passing notes in class. Then he needlessly lies to the dwarves that they'll be safe in Beorin's house, even though he's not sure. You'll be safe here tonight, I hope. You want me to cast my friends aside? Friends? Oh, you mean the pawns you use to meddle in world affairs whom you've abandoned on three different occasions? Speaking of meddling, how about this one? Gandalf assassinates the head of state of a sovereign nation even though the Goblin King had rightfully taken prisoner those who had trespassed on his land and have been hostile to his allies. But he'd never do the same thing to Thranduil even though he did the exact same thing. <coughs> Racist. So at the end of the movie, Gandalf tells Bilbo he knows that he has the One Ring. I keep thinking about this scene and why it was included in the movie. First of all, this is their final scene together. Could we maybe focus on their characters rather than trying to connect this to Lothar? No? Not even a chance? Well, fine. But then at least make it make sense. You see, I just watched the extended prologue for Desolation for the first time and was pretty fucking surprised because Gandalf learns that Thorin's dad had the dwarvish ring at the Battle of Moria. So Thrain was wearing it when he... when he went missing. Since Gandalf assumes that Thrain died in that battle, he then believes that the ring is somewhere near Moria. And that's pretty important information because at this point in the movie, Gandalf is assuming that the ring Bilbo found is the old dwarf ring. So then why let Bilbo take the ring to Erebor where it could easily get lost again or fall into the hands of the enemy? Gandalf seemed pretty concerned about finding it. Why not get the ring somewhere safe beforehand? But wait, hold on a second. There's another extended scene in Desolation where Gandalf discovers that Thrain 
is alive, but that his ring has been lost to Sauron. That means that every other ring is accounted for except the one ring, which means that when Gandalf says he knows Bilbo has one at the end of The Hobbit, it can only be the one ring, making his investigation at the beginning of Fellowship completely redundant, and making Gandalf look completely stupid for not checking into it pronto. And another point, if he had a confrontation with Sauron here, why isn't he looking into the matter of the ring immediately afterwards instead of decades later? Way to drop the ball, Gandalf. But really, that all these obvious story problems arise out of the absence of certain scenes and the presence of others signals to me that Jackson's priorities in making these movies are as follows. 1. Making sure they buy the extended editions. 2. Exploiting nostalgia so that they like the movie. 3. Action scenes that look good in trailers so that they'll go and see the movie. And in a distant fourth, the actual story. Oh my god, we're halfway there already. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button because tomorrow it's time to talk about Legolas and Legolas's last. But first, time for a little bonus stupidity. Others will now look to the mountain for its wealth, for its position. I'm sorry, what was your name again? And why are you giving me unsolicited foreign policy advice?